Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all well. Juan Romero and Jordan here from Switch Watch. And boy, oh boy, have we got a list for you. It's the best shoot 'em ups or as Jordan likes to call them, shmups. Some people hate that term, don't they? But Jordan and I love these games. We often fight about who's going to play the latest one for review. So we thought we'd have a larger than usual battle. Stay till the end so you can let us know who you think your winner is. And don't forget, if you are new here, subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy this video on the road to 100,000 subscribers and we'll get there we'll be giving away a nintendo switch oled now let's get down to the serious business jordan take it away thanks one let's get this battle started i am going to start off with the awesome gunbird which i reviewed on my old ash channel before starting with switch watch psycho have made some awesome shmups and this is this has to be one of their best for sure in 19th century europe Five gunbirds are challenged. Each gunbird keeps a wish for themselves and try to collect a magic mirror which will grant them any wish that they desire. Depending on the character you choose, you will see different endings for each. They also play very differently as well. Personally, I prefer Yuan Nang. The only thing that may concern you to hear is that there are only seven short stages, which it will take you about 10-15 minutes in total to complete. It is short, but the pick up and play nature of it makes you want to play over and over again to master it. And for the price, it's just an awesome game. Of course, you can play this vertically, and like I have done a number of times because I'm a nutcase like that, you can rotate your TV for maximum effect. Also, Gunbird 2 is very awesome as well, but I think I have to go with Gunbird 1 out of the two of them. Thank you, Jordan. A very strong start there with the Gunbird games, which I'm also a massive fan of. I'm going straight in with Blackbird, which is a weird shooter in that it has a girl turned into a bird, but will you destroy the world? What I love about this game is the audio visual mix. When you hear the musical score, you're going to think this shouldn't work, but it works masterfully well. The gameplay is awesome and you work for the highest score possible to unlock the best ending out of eight possible endings. Unlock tree mode and you will go against new enemies, unlock new characters and more. The combo system and bomb system are great and I'm sure that you'll love leaving your score on the leaderboards in the score attack mode. I do love Blackbird as well, I have that physically. What a start to this list. But next up, I'm pulling out the big gun. My favorite shmup on the Switch, Steridim. This is a game I went into with very low expectations, but came out very, very highly impressed by it. First of all, the rock soundtrack is just absolutely sublime. Heavy rock metal tracks makes this even more of a joy to play. It grabs you without subtlety and this will rock you for sure. For a lesson, check out my review by clicking the top right hand corner. Yeah, it's a pixel game but the animations are just incredible. Explosions look great too, but the bosses look a little bit too similar with the only negative point in my opinion. In terms of gameplay, you're looking a roguelike here, so not one for the purists, but for me, it just makes it all the more replayable. Weapons, power-ups, environments, randomly generated, which makes it a great game to replay over and over again. It is by far my most played shmup on the Switch. It was available physically by Super Rare Games, but good luck getting that for like under £100 by now. It must be like £200. What a pity. Fantastic, Jordan, but now it's time to delve into my childhood with R-Type Dimensions X. There was a game back in the 80s called R-Type, and I had my first taste. On the Amiga 500, I was instantly hooked trying to complete each level, even though I found it insanely hard. The thing that grabbed me, though, was the weapons, such as the Invincible Force Pod, which attached to the ship, and you could block bullets and damage enemies with it, too. You had the bit devices, one hovering above the ship and another below, and you could fire off bullets. Holding down the button would allow you to build up and release your laser you could attach the force pod either at the front or the back of the ship and even detach it within flight to shoot extra bullets and i found the whole system really simple but really compelling problem was though it's still as tough as nails in this version though you get both the 3d and 2d visuals can swap between both infinite node is a welcome as it allows continuous progression from the start of the game to the final boss and you get both our type and part two too and an added co-op mode to play with friends. What more could you want an absolute classic couple of games here? Great classics there, Juan. I cannot disagree at all. But my next choice, another game that I reviewed for the channel called Tengai. Tengai, also known as Sengoku Blade, which is the sequel to Sengoku Aces, it gets a little bit confusing, but whatever. This second entry is different to the first game, switching to horizontal play. 
Tengai has a special soundtrack here making it tense and memorable. By Psycho standards, I think it's exceptional and I love the visuals in this sprite based shooter. Flying through caves and underwater with multiple different areas, very nice variety, the characters look good and so do the enemies. I love the flying character sprites here but the gameplay is the biggest winner with lots of bullets to evade, loads of power ups to get, I love Junis and her Lima. The game is tight here and I very much recommend it, especially with the 7 difficulty levels giving casuals and hardcore fans a great challenge either way. So many great shooters here Jordan, but my next choice is Danmaku Unlimited 3 which I think is a great choice for newcomers to this genre, especially those seeking a bullet hell like this one, which are my favourite types of shooters to be fair on the most part. Here you fly vertically. Great for Jordan who likes to turn his TV vertically, yes he is mad. The game is simple but hard to master, holding A gives you a spread shot and X and A together gives you a more focused laser. This truly is a game of a risk versus reward leading to some absolutely insane runs or frustrating destruction killing your score. Here if you travel close to bullets your gauge builds up allowing you to unleash the mother of all attacks. Some love the visuals, I think they're more functional, not as special as they could have been but what I love is that rock soundtrack not to everyone's taste but I certainly enjoyed it there is adjustable difficulty levels which makes the game a lot more approachable and I certainly very much recommend this one yes I know another psycho choice but I can't help it that they're so awesome Dragon Blaze which I also reviewed on this channel so search it up for more information four characters which are dragon riders how cool does that get press X and you can dismount the dragon and thrust it forward using it as a battering ram which really adds variation to your abilities and it's a great tactic using it at the right time Secondly, launching your dragon can pick up items that you may not be able to get due to the barrage of firepower against you. This adds a little more depth to it. The game has the usual stuff like auto shooting, panic bombs, charge shot and things like that. Another quality game with a great flow of action and of course playing in vertical mode is great. Just be warned, it is bloody hard and will require a lot of patience even on the lowest difficulty level. Dodd on Patchy is my next pick, Dodd on Patchy Resurrection, for me an excellent game with endless amounts of challenge, 8 different ways to play and most have extensive training modes, unfortunately the real downside here is that you'll have to do a bit of research to get the best out of this, due to a lack of information on many of the things that you can do in the game, however it's still a great game, fantastic from Cave, there's lots of tricks and techniques to learn, super deep shooter, exciting to play in a game that will seldom bore you due to the quality of gameplay on offer here. Yes, it can be difficult, but with lots of practice, it's one of my top games on this list. Cotton Reboot is not really a reboot but a game which includes the original and a remake of that said game. I love the enemy variety which are always fun to deal with and to learn their moves here. You probably have more enemies flying at you rather than bullets. Ok maybe an exaggeration but what I really like here though is that you can fly anywhere on screen without worries of collision. The arranged mode has been dialed up, it feels a lot quicker and there is a crap load of crystals on the screen. It's always fun to juggle them. I like the remake rather than the original as the original is a little drab compared to the remake but you know I enjoyed completing the 7 stages on offer here and while it's probably not the number one game on this list if you have many of the others already then this is a good one to add to your collection. Now Raiden uh, Mikado Remix, I really like this, a vertical shooter which is action packed, the 16 musical tracks have been reborn with live performances and new arrangements which I very much enjoyed, there's an arcade mode, overkill and supports one or two players, the global leaderboard is what will keep competitive players playing through. The Darius Cosmic Collection, ok this is a little bit of a cheat because the Darius Collection has like 7 versions across 4 titles in this collection including Darius the original arcade version and a new version and an extra version and y you know there's a lot of versions of Darius and stuff like that. If you love Darius, you've got your Darius here, yes Darius Darius Darius, uh, that's all I really need to say right? It's Darius! Next up, Cyvaria Delta, a game released in the year 2000 and in this enhanced version on the Switch it contains the classic buzz system that lets you level up by avoiding direct hits and avoiding enemy attacks by grazing 
those oncoming enemies. There's no power-ups here. Instead, you level up through the buzz system. The more you risk, the more reward you'll get. Things are kept competitive with the online leaderboards, and there's quite a lot of things you can customize here in how you play the game. So it's open to the casual player and hardcore player. And for more details on this, please check out my review. For my next choice, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go with my possibly favorite retro shooter, Blazing Star. I reviewed this on my old channel. It was one of my early Switch reviews, and it's just an incredible side-scrolling horizontal shooter. Incredible sprite work, endlessly replayable, a fantastic soundtrack, and it's got a little bit of cheese that makes it so special. Bonus! Do you like bonuses? Well, you're going to like this one. Bonus! The boss battles are fantastic, and this is a game I could pick up and play any time at all. For me, Blazing Star, Gunbird, and Steridon, that's my trifecta of perfection. I would say that Rolling Gunner is one of my favorite shooters on this list. It was directed by ex-Cave developer Daisuke Kazumi, who worked on Death Smiles 2 and Dodd and Patchy, and Rolling Gunner is accessible. It's not irritatingly difficult, which means newcomers to the genre and more experienced players will have fun here. Of course, there is a challenge to be had, but the game is that fun that you will not mind putting in the hours. Now, Bullet Hell, sorry, Bullet Hell games are called that for a reason. They are hell, usually super tough too, but this has good difficulty options in this horizontal shooter. Training options and the ability to save your replays too. Killing enemies and collect the dropped medals increases your energy score and once you hit 1000 you can power up your main guns. Add to that the limit gauge for boosting damage and your rolling gun and it's just awesome to behold. A really great game that everyone should check out. Esp Galuda 2 was a much requested cave shooter when it came to shmup fans port begging. Originally when it came to consoles of this arcade classic, it was exclusive to the Xbox 360 during that weird time when Microsoft really pushed for the Japanese market with shmups, visual novels and JRPGs. What a weird time. It didn't work, but those in Japan who did buy a 360 were in heaven, no doubt in part thanks to Espgaluda 2. Following on from the first game, still utilizing the awakening mode, and this is just all out chaos to the casual eye. Wave after wave of bullets come, even after killing an enemy, they can still unleash shots. That's not fair, and this certainly lives up to its bullet hell pigeonhole. Definitely one for fans of manic shooters. Ikaruga is absolutely awesome. I've got a great physical from Nicarlis actually of this one where you can actually build your own ship. I'm not sure if they're still available. I think they're going for quite a lot of money now. But Ikaruga is one of those games that has the polarity mechanism where bullets are either white or black and so are the ships. And dependent on what color you make your ship will either absorb the same color bullets or you will get destroyed. It's very, very difficult indeed. And Jordan's going to talk about a game called Power Roomy next, which takes this effect to the next level as if it wasn't difficult enough. This game was developed by Treasure over five stages, but they are really difficult. But one game that I absolutely love deserves every bit to be on this list. Great game there, Juan. Power Rumi is my next choice. This is a game that will take some patience as it's bloody hard and has a very interesting mechanic which you'll have to get used to. Put simply, it's the Trinity mechanic, kind of like Ikaruga, but with one extra. Three different weapons, blue, red, and green, and the enemy ships are those colors too. Essentially, if you'll need to use the right color weapon to get the job done. It's like rubbing your stomach, patting your head, and jumping up and down at the same time. It's hard. My brain doesn't function, really. Ikaruga was hard. Well, this is kind of just a bit harder, I think. This was available physically on Play Asia, but sadly, it's long sold out by now. Zero Gunner 2 is a great game from Psycho, and it costs an astronomical amount of hard cash on the Dreamcast, but on the Switch, you can buy it for very little money. I loved the transformational bosses, the omnidirectional shooting, and you can play two players here too. There are difficulty options, but the only downside is that it's super short. Still, for the money here, well worth the investment. How can you have a collection of shmups and not include the shmup collection with three games that have been remastered? Armed 7, a mech shooter action game with customizable weapons, Cetasius Next, a redesigned classic horizontal shooter, and lastly Wolf Flame where your mission is to destroy the invaders military base. All very decent games and it's a nice physical which I will put in the description if you want to order. 
It's my turn again to choose another Psycho choice, and I'm going for Samurai Aces, which was one of their first releases. Plays similar to Gunbird, actually. The gameplay is compelling. There is variation here, which will keep you guessing. Play in tape mode for the ultimate experience. Illmatic Envelope Swamp is another favourite of mine. You may have seen it if you watched my review of it. It's currently only available in Japanese, there's no English. And there is a physical import of it, link below for that. Anyways, this is all about uh, uh, weirdness. There are a hundred levels to take on, all with a bit of variety and uh, yeah, plenty of weirdness. It's hard to talk about this one in such a short section, so I really do advise you head over to watch my review of it, where I can explain it a whole lot better than I can here in just like 20 seconds. But trust me, if you like wackiness, if you enjoy plenty of replayability, lots of different tasks and goals to be getting on with, Illmatic Envelope Swamp does have a lot going for it. G Darius HD has to be my next pick, and this version of the game, you can play it with the modern HD visuals or in its retro style. The capture ball system allows you to forge your own strategy in this awesome horizontal shooter. Here you take control of the Silver Hawk. It was the first game in the series to include three-dimensional polygonal, polygonal graphics, which I always think age quite badly, but that's just me. With a great soundtrack, quality addictive gameplay, it's a great shooter that I recommend on the Nintendo Switch. My next choice is a game with plenty of personality, Cotton Fantasy. I would say it has a rather different visual palette to many of the shmups on this list, and it's rather cute especially for the characters of Cotton. Everyone loves Cotton. Great presentation with lots of action, it can be a little bit overwhelming at times, but it never gets to the point where you want to give up. Bosses are so unique looking and this horizontal shooter is a nice change up with plenty of depth to keep you interested. Alright, uh, you know, I always found it hard to pronounce this, but Mush He Mesama, Mushi Shashama, is one of Cave's very best shooter maps, and surely this has to win me this battle. I love the aesthetics being more about aggressive insects and wildlife rather than the many games that have the same ship invasions. Here, you ride on a beetle as Princess Rico and must weave through the multiple projectiles aimed your way. It's a bullet hell and it's all about learning patterns and avoiding your hitbox from being hit. Chasing high scores here is what makes games like these have that one more go feel. Sure it's tough, but there are difficulty levels that you can choose and several game modes with different scoring tactics. So there should be something here for everybody. Most of you who are into your shoot 'em ups probably already played the hell out of this one. But if you haven't, make sure you add this to your collection. How about I just kill this video right now by bringing out ESP Raditai. Did I say that correctly? Who cares? You should be playing this shmup rather than caring about my terrible Japanese. Part of the Shot Trigger series from M2, this is widely considered to be the ultimate shmup on the Nintendo Switch. If you don't believe me, then you should watch our Japanese Gems episode talking about this all-time great arcade classic. This is a magnificent package put together with the utmost respect for the shooter genre. ESP basically does everything a shmup needs and then some, featuring characters with telekinetic power to add a creative edge to your weaponry. This is an essential game. It is eye-wateringly priced and is only available in Japanese with a physical version too, but shmup fans, this, this is the creme de la creme. This Chatos is a really cool shooter, fast and exhilarating, three modes here, original mode, power-ups and advanced mode, and you can race against the clock in attack mode. There's also three different BGM sound sources. It's available in original BGM, arranged BGM, and remastered BGM 2. Now, this game is really quick, fast, and I enjoyed it. It's got a simple scoring, difficulty level settings, make it easy for anyone for the first time they play too. A shield system, and it's also a hardcore shoot 'em up for those that are looking for more of a challenge. There's no gaps between the stages, and there's no data loading wait times, allowing you to play non stop from beginning to end. Really enjoyable, this one. Death Smiles is a great side scrolling bullet hell shmup from the legendary development studio Cave. Here you fly in a broomstick. Yeah, a broomstick in this Halloween themed world and a, and a Christmas themed one as well. There's, there's a little bit of variety here. This is an interesting game with a very hardcore scoring system. So while casual people can play it, they may not get the most out of it unless you're a hardcore shmup fan going for that high score. Maybe a little bit too complex for some people out there, but you know, you can just casually play through it and enjoy it at the same time. There's loads of modes here. Bullet Hell fans, you're definitely going to want this package. 
And that's it from me, folks. Thank you ever so much for staying with us through one of our favorite genres here. For a little bit of fun, if you think I chose the best games, which, you know, obviously I did. I mean, obviously. Then please give me a star emoji in the comments because I like a blazing star. Remember to subscribe for your chance to win the Switch OLED, and we'll leave links below so you can purchase the physical versions of these games in the description if they're available. Juan, what's your last choice, my friend? Thank you so much, Jordan. Some fantastic games there. My last choice is Caladrius Blaze, and a vertical scrolling shooting game which was developed by Moss. Now, there's multiple storylines here, and there's more than 15 unique characters. Eight different characters and ships have unique powers to choose from too, and they have what they call the element shot system, and this allows more strategic weapon level ups. Now there's tutorial mode too, so it's enjoyable for first timers. That's it from me, everybody. Really hope that you enjoyed this list. If you enjoyed it, then make sure you choose a fist pump emoji for me. That's the emoji for me to win and leave that in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new here and you enjoyed this video. We really do appreciate it. And we'll be giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED when we hit 100,000 subscribers. I want to thank all of our members. Thank you for your continued support. And of course, our existing subscribers and watchers. If you're still here, you're an absolute legend. We hope you enjoy this list. Let us know down below if we missed any shooters on here that you think should be added. We really do appreciate it. And we'll see you again on the next one. See you later from Jordan and myself. Take care.